Francisco Bay. This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080 The Fan. We'll get to the game stuff coming up here. Fascinating game between Oregon and Ohio State. Uh, my beeves got choated this weekend. They did. <clears throat> we'll get to that. Huskies. Is that worse yeah. than what happened to the Huskies in Iowa? Really? <laughs> I don't know. What's yeah. Iowa's record? Yeah, it is. Were they 2-4 and four going into that game? Yeah, it is. It's, it's Nevada. Ask that question again? It's Nevada. You're way too smart to ask stupid <laughs> questions like that. You're it's, better than that. It's Nevada. We got choted. And they, they beat Michigan last week. <clears throat> Anyways, um, yeah. We'll get to all of that. Lincoln Riley having a tough time in Southern California. They're like three or four plays away from being undefeated, man. Just three games away from being undefeated now. I I might be joining you soon. <laughs> hey. uh, you might be right. Where dirt Come on right. over. The water is warm, my friend. No, but I, I thought this weekend, look, I, I know it's been a lot of Oregon, but this was, it just felt bigger. I think part of that is having game day kind of helps set the tone. And then it's top five matchup. It's just in any other world, this is Bama, Georgia. We just yeah. talked about th- that game a couple weeks ago. Yeah, this is the same thing. It's a top five matchup. You don't get a lot of these in our great state. And this is Oregon's first year. They made a splash, pun intended, with putting a duck in the river at Big Ten Media Day. They did this team out west stuff. Dan Lanning. He, it's not that he was, you know, acting like he was going to win the conference, but he certainly came in with the energy of, "We're here to win the conference, gentlemen." And then they started out really shaky and created a narrative about themselves, and so. It kind of just sets up this big, interesting matchup between two top five teams. Chip Kelly quits being a head coach so he can be a coordinator. (laughs) So now Ohio State has two head coaches basically on the sidelines. And I just thought it was so interesting going in. And the weekend takeaway for me, not wearing yellow and green the way you are, it, it, it was validation. I thought in a lot of ways it validated. Look, Oregon has been at the top or near the top of the mountain before in the conversation of college football. But this is different. The Pac-12, for whatever reason, never had the full respect, I think, of diehard college football fan around the country. It's because we didn't win a title for 20 years. We didn't win a title, and then whenever you played a big boy, Ohio State and Rose Bowl, LSU, whoever it was, uh, Washington, Bama, they couldn't either compete or they yep. couldn't get past that hump. And so, yeah, 2014, they got to a title game. 2010, they were in the title game. But 2016 hit hard. Four and eight, Helfrich gets fired. In comes the snake salesman, Willie Taggart. He goes seven and five, and we act like it was the most amazing seven and five of all time. We're swag surfing. He then leaves after one year. Then comes an offensive coordinator who didn't call plays. He's really just an offensive line guy. He recruits really well, but he can't win that big game. And so, like, Oregon's kind of in the conversation, but they're not taken very seriously. Yeah. You're in the Big Ten. I just I thought Saturday was a culmination of you're back to where you were in 2014. The feeling of, oh, we belong with anybody and everybody. The difference was the way the game was played because 2014 is all-time special. But then you went up against Ezekiel Elliott, and yeah. you said, oh, this is where we lack. Yeah. And I thought Saturday was kind of just a stamp of we're we're in the Big Ten now and we're serious and we're built different. I thought it was a validation of what Lanning's built and a we're back at the top of the mountain with a lot of with a few other teams. I, I had the same validation feeling, honestly, in my belief in him as a head coach. Like there have been times over the last year where there's been criticism that's gone his way. And there probably will be the rest of the season. It's incredibly hard to win a national championship. And if Oregon doesn't win one, I'm sure more criticism will come out. I, I sent out a tweet after the game on Saturday night, said, Hey, I'm confused. I thought Dan Landon can't win a big game. Somebody explain this one to me. And I enjoy the number of people who are already responding by moving the goalposts and say, well, call me when he wins a championship. So that's what we're going to do now. You Just a, just a FYI, you skipped a step in the moving of the goalposts. First, it's supposed to be, but he hasn't won a playoff game. And then when he wins a playoff game, you're supposed to move the yeah. goalposts so he hasn't won a national championship. It was validation in his belief, uh, or in our belief in him, I think. Um he came, he came close last year, but he couldn't quite get the team over the hump. The reality was they were two yards away from winning that first game, and if Brandon Dorless affects a fumble a split second sooner, maybe you win the second game, right? Like, that's how slim the margin was. The reality about what he's been doing and what he's been building is that they're not going to go anywhere, and that's always been the thing that has kept me feeling confident in the direction of the program. This, you know, there were times in the, in the past when Oregon would have a big season 
and there would be a devastating feeling about a big time loss because it felt like all your eggs were in that basket. We have Marcus Mariota, a generational quarterback, and if we don't win with him, how are we ever we'll going to win one? It. Like if right. we can't do it right. with him, how are we? This it just has felt different for the last eighteen months of the way he's recruiting, the money that they have to spend in NIL, the direction, the the, the way that the roster like. Think about from his first game as a head coach, they lose 49-3 to to Georgia, playing one of the best teams in the sport. That was in year one, game one, to where they are now at the line of scrimmage, talent-wise, and being able to hang with one of the best teams in the sport and beat one of the best teams in the sport in a game that could have gone either way. Yeah, It just shows you how far they have truly come in just two and a half years, and the recruiting impact from this game is going to be bonanza over the next couple of weeks. They've already got a commit yesterday. they got multiple silent commits that are ready to jump on, like, it is full steam ahead. They needed one of these wins to kind of accelerate the process, and that what is, is what I think the hope is this win can be on Saturday I mean, night. his mantra is literally, You can sleep when you die. I mean, the guy, I, I don't know how much yep. people believe or don't believe in Dan Lanning that aren't Duck fan. I'm certain that non-Duck fan still questions them getting to the top, and I think that's fair. You know, there's only two coaches, I think, in the sport that, or three, because Mac Brown's still a thing, but... There's only a couple of these guys in the yeah. sport that win, so it's a really hard thing. And now the playoff, I think, makes it a little harder because you got to win more games. And it's all going to come down to matchups and who you got to play. But see, and this is where we'll get to the talk of the game. It was how you won. That's different. Yep. Now, you did beat Ohio State in the regular season with Mario by winning the line of scrimmage on the offensive line. But with Mario, there was still a little bit of something that you you just didn't feel quite right. I would argue this Ohio State team's different than that one, too. Because well, it they, motivated yes. them that day to actually build out the way. I mean, how many times? We'll get to the game stuff here to kick off the second hour. Like, I was asking myself this. I'll go look at the official stats. I don't know if I heard Jack Sawyer's name mentioned once. No. And I think it speaks. And or Derek, JT Tuomalau. Tuomalau had one play kind of in the second half yeah. that it was like a goal line stop. Largely, they have names on that defensive line that you know that you didn't hear. And on the other side, Oregon has a name that came from that conference, stayed in it now because Oregon's in it. And I thought was a re- he was wreaking havoc, yep. wrecking havoc. They don't win in the game without it, without Derek Harmon. And you had no Jordan Birch in that game. No. That was what we talked about on Friday's show. So we'll get to the game side of this, but validation was kind of my takeaway. Yep. I think Duck fans should feel, and I think why they celebrated the way they did was – we're here, and we're real. 